Hi everybody, I'm here with Mitch Roth. We have a very outstanding occasion going on here. Mitch is like really putting things together. He's got a lot of followers here. We're all excited. I want Mitch just to say a few things to you. Go ahead, Mitch. What's well, up? Kim, thanks a lot for having me here. And uh, well, actually, thanks for coming to my birthday oh, bash. Oh, my pleasure. My pleasure. I think You're 39, right? Uh, 48. Oh, no. 48. <laughs> okay. But uh, it's great seeing all these people coming out for to support. You know, we're looking at something different. We're trying to be smarter, not just tougher. You know, as I told you before, our prisons are full, so every time I put someone in, the prison systems kick people out. It's a toaster oven. It's a toaster oven. When we're about to have these people coming back from the mainland, so we're going to start kicking people out of prison before we start putting them in. So we have to think, how can we be smarter? We also have to look at how we can get cases through our system a little bit quicker. So there's things that we can do, uh, charging our, our people, putting the right people in prison, I think is, is, is what we need to do. I love what you're saying, putting the right people. So it's really a high priority thing. We want to go for the hard, hard criminals. We want to keep the hard criminals in and we want to come up with some smarter solutions and consequences for people that break the law. Things like, you know, our ignition airlock that we passed the last couple of years, um, we've had over 11,000 people who blown into our in-car breathalyzers. If they have alcohol in their breath, the car doesn't start. That's a great success well, story. We have, uh, we have electronic monitoring that we could be using. That's the ankle brace. That's the ankle brace. And, you know, with both of these things, the criminals can be paying rather than you and I paying out of taxes. Right, so that doesn't come out of our tax dollars at all. My understanding is the criminal has to pay the restitution. That's correct. Oh, that's man. correct. So that's a relief. Well, it, it's thinking smarter, not just tougher. You, st you have to have consequences, but you need to do things. Things like our um, drug nuisance abatement that we did. Mm -hmm. You know, if we're judging ourselves on the amount of arrest, the amount of cases that we prosecute successfully, the, the amount of missions, but yet we still have a problem in the community. But how successful really are we? I got what you're saying. we got to look at success and define success in a different way. We know that, you know, our recidivism rate for people coming out of prison were, were somewhere around 60%, and those are the people we're catching. So it's not working that great. we got to think smarter. Uh, with, with that as well. More education, maybe? More education. we got to look at one, at a young age, how do, how do we keep these people from getting into the system in the first place? Working with our schools. Absolutely. Working, you know, to prevent domestic violence, which is a huge group to... Uh, now, you've had apply. some good successes with the school system, yeah? I've had some great successes with the school system. We did a program called Chatter Dreams, which is an alcohol prevention program. We did... Uh, did this six years. I helped bring this to the, the Big Island. Our last one we did was at Kealakane High School in Kona. That school had the highest mortality rate for driving and you know, drinking and driving, people getting in crashes and dying. They, they were losing about two kids a year. We've now gone through two graduation cycles after doing this project without losing a single kid. Knock on wood. Thinking smart. And it wasn't so much what we did, it was bring the project to them. And rather than the adults telling the kids not to drink and drive, we made it so the kids made it their issue. They are participating. They are participating. I love those programs. And, we got to get people involved. That's right. And they're going out to the younger students, talking to the younger students. So this is what you're doing, is you're getting people involved. Getting Instead people. of we're on this side, they're on that side. Let's work together. That's, Let's get involved. That's right. And from our prosecutors, what we need is we need to have our prosecutors not just processing cases with blinders on. We need them to start thinking about how they can be part of the solutions rather than looking at each case individually. Things like, you know, our people who are driving without a license. We have a, a ton of those cases. What we did um, last year... A lot year, of those were repeat offenders. Repeat, repeat offenders. Same guy. Over Same guy over. over and over and over again. How do we fix that? Well, one of the things that we passed last year was a bill that allows the police to tow uh, their cars. They're not... Uh, if they're driving without a license, they're driving under the influence, if they're driving, you know, uh, with a license. You mean if or... I get stopped and I don't have a license, they aren't going to let me get in my car and drive off? Well, the police can tow your I car understand. to a tow yard. I mean, that's just... Yeah. Also, they're going to use their own discretion. That's right. And that's beautiful. And the offender pays for the towing. The offender pays for the storage. You have an immediate consequence. And if you're loaning your car to someone that, you know, doesn't have a license or maybe going out and drinking... You'll think twice yeah, about absolutely. doing that. Uh, we got to do things. One of the things I started talking to me about is the amount of time it takes us to charge cases. Oh, I was listening to that uh, piece. That is 
it's fantastic that you want to shorten that time so it's we give things take they are waiting around for months and months and years. So. Well, you know, we have cases that big cases, we have murder cases that have been out there for years. And, you know, part of the job of a prosecutor, we are not allowed to charge people unless we believe we can prove the case beyond a reasonable doubt. That's an ethical burden. Right, right. That's a good ethical burden. I don't want to change that. But that ethical burden is not, we don't charge cases unless we have a guaranteed slam dunk win. We don't charge cases um, because we're waiting for every single piece of the evidence to come in. But and this allow, comes down to your discretion. That comes down to our discretion. Okay. I'll give you an example. You know, Go back to our negligent homicide where people are drinking and driving. We average about a year for cases where people kill people that are drunk and driving. A year, year and a half before we even get them into the system. We had three cases that uh, came through Gila last year. I was involved in all three of them. Where the night of the incident, the offender was arrested, he was charged with a crime, and we, you know, we went forward. Rather than waiting for the police to, you know, wait for the blood to come back, right, wait right. for the police to finish up with right, the, right. the, you know, all the examinations that they, they needed to. We knew that we would be able to prove the case, um, but we had to wait for the police to get the evidence. We knew that evidence was coming, and so that's why we charged that. that went time. ahead and moved forward. We went ahead and moved forward. That is what we need. We got to get these these high priority cases move forward and move through. The high priority cases need to be moved forward, move, move through. Because if your daughter, if your son, if your nephew, if your niece, if your relative was killed in a crash or if you killed in something, oh, yeah. and, and we're waiting a year, you're waiting no a year good. for us to just do something. No good. Is that justice? No. You know, for, for those people, justice delayed is justice denied. Right. So we need to think smarter, we need to be more compassionate, and we need to really get on the ball and get these cases I can the tell you're completely enthused. I can tell you're involved. I can tell you are wanting to get on and make this happen. And I can also tell it's your birthday party. Well, thanks a lot, Kim. I think I better let this guy go. He's got some more important things than talking to me to do. Thanks, Thanks a lot, Mitch. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right. You take care. And you know, we'll probably end up on YouTube. That's good. Okay. Absolutely. Stay. Stay here for the party. Okay. Cool. Thanks, Mitch.